we have SummerSlam getting ready to heat up. Hulkamania is running wild and two major releases in the WWE. Speaking of which, New Japan Pro Wrestling looking to invade. All that and more on today's episode of Tap Out Talk. Let's get right in. Is there a talent partnership discussions are happening with the WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling? Is that right? Yeah, New Japan Pro Wrestling and WWE are looking to have a talent partnership. The partnership would include right now um, an exclusive partnership with any American talent. So here's what's happening. The WWE is looking to lock up New Japan for a couple reasons. One, they're looking to, they notice it's the AEW effect, and they notice AEW is starting to get all these partnerships with TNA Impact Wrestling. They've always had a loose partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling. They've also got um, AAA down in Mexico as a lucha partner. So WWE's taking notice of this, and AEW's getting steam. And so now all of a sudden, WWE has an interest in working with New Japan, and they approach New Japan. So I find that to be very interesting. Let's talk about it real quick because I do think there is some cool concepts here that could happen if this was to work out. So first and foremost, I feel like a talent partnership, if it was done correctly, could be huge and could be fun for the wrestling industry. Um, I think each of these brands are strong on their own. They've been around for decades. I would look at it as this would be WWE versus New Japan Pro Wrestling. And you could have cross-invasion angles back and forth from the United States to, to uh, the Asia area. And then what I look at is, I mean, you could have such matchups. You know, you could have like the Bullet Club versus the Roman Empire. Um, I talked about that a while ago with um, Tama Tonga being a New Japan Pro Wrestling guy. At the time when I reported it, I said... Um, I didn't know a way for Tama Tonga to like get to the WWE with his New Japan thing, but now that looks like that could be reality. I think him and his tag team, the Gorillas of Destiny, would make a great matchup for the Usos. And so I think that could be a cross-brand tag team match. Um, and meanwhile, you could have other members of the Bullet Club taking on members of the Roman Empire, like Roman Reigns. And you know you could build that side up a little bit more with some of the guys that I talked about previously on the show. Um, I also could see things like um, AJ Styles and Finn Balor actually betraying the WWE and joining the Bullet Club again back in New Japan. I think that would be an interesting match up there. I think that could um, entice this whole Roman versus the world, so to speak, right? So Bullet Club versus Roman Empire, I think that would be a fun matchup. Uh, we know a lot of the WWE guys. Let's talk about the New Japan guys that also could get some interesting matches. Now, there are a couple that you guys know. We could have um, Kenta versus Hideo Itami. No, actually, I'm just kidding. That's the same person in case you guys didn't know. Um, you know, Kenta, of course, is in Japan, and he wrestled as Hideo Itami here in uh, WWE. So uh, just a humor on that, and that would be like having Asuka wrestle her former self in New Japan. Um, on a serious note, though, you do have guys you know like Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. who wrestle for New Japan and are some of their main stars. Um, you guys have seen them before in the Cruiserweight Classic tournament that happened a few years ago, and those guys really highlighted the Cruiserweight Classic. So I think you could have some matches with them. Keep in mind they are a few more years ahead in their career now, so they are definitely evolved. Um, I could see them. I could see a Will Ospreay who a lot of you guys may not know, but actually is um, a pretty big deal over in New Japan. And then you could also tie in guys like Juice Robinson, who um, have been to the WWE. There's just a lot of WWE cross-promotion talent that you could do. And don't forget about Okada, okay? Okada is one of their biggest stars in Japan right now. And a few years ago at Wrestle Kingdom, he had what was dubbed as one of the greatest matches against Kenny Omega of all time in wrestling. So Okada versus a top WWE guy, I think that would make a interesting matchup. So New Japan Pro Wrestling could make this a fun angle with WWE if done correctly. On the WWE side, you know, we talked about Roman. 
Uh, Daniel Bryan is a big factor here. Even though he's technically a free agent right now, New Japan Pro Wrestling has been all over wanting Daniel Bryan to be a part of this if this is going to happen. I could see Daniel Bryan taking on Okada. Or I could see him taking on Zack Sabre Jr. I think those are really good matches for Daniel Bryan. And I think it would be a chance for him to shine. Um, Daniel could be viewed as the world leader of the WWE if done correctly. Um, and we just know that people in America, they adore him or even worldwide. So there's definitely talent and opportunity there. Um, guys like Seth Rollins could really shine. So, I mean, there are guys out there. And then, of course, the ever-returning Brock Lesnar. He always has a spot in New Japan since he used to wrestle there and WWE, and he's a worldwide face. So, I mean, there is matchups that we could do. Um, this partnership is very intriguing, of course. Now, I look at it, and it has to be done right. The way I would actually promote it is I would have New Japan Pro Wrestling report and cater their show to make it look like the WWE is the villain. And then I would actually have the WWE... Um, on their show, promote New Japan Wrestling as kind of the villain. So that way you have each country kind of representing and you're seeing the same story through two different views. And, you know, everybody's always the hero in their own story. So I think today's day and age, you can tell these stories and you'll get fans that will watch both shows and they'll start picking a side naturally due to the internet and due to the modern day wrestling and how it's worked. So I don't think you need to pace one as a good guy as a face and one group as a heel stable i don't think you need to do that here i think you just need to do that in the actual shows and then you let the fans decide worldwide kind of who they're uh, picking the side that they want to be on so i think you have two great organizations here and they could do a lot of great business um i want to talk a little bit about why this is happening so again i talked about the aew effect being a big factor in this and i do agree with that i think WWE is being very corporate and a little bullish on it, and they're trying to stomp out AEW. Even though they say they're not worried about them, this is a direct hit at them. Um, John Moxley, um, a.k.a. Dean Ambrose from WWE days, is actually a current title holder in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I think you know those promotions have a strong partnership. So I think WWE is trying to stammer that out and the fact that they want to be exclusive to them. So if I'm New Japan, I would be very, very careful of doing this, okay? It could be great for the promotion, and this could be the next big major storyline in wrestling. But you have to understand, WWE has been trying to take over the world, okay? They've done very well in UK. They've really tried to tap into the India market, and they're still working on that because that's one of the bigger markets. Japan has a huge wrestling market as well. And the WWE has tried to do an NXT Japan and they've tried to invade a little and they've gotten shut down and pretty much failed at that because New Japan Pro Wrestling has so much control over there. They are kind of the WWE of the Asia Pacific area. So that's the one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. And if you're New Japan, you got to be careful because WWE, they may just kind of smile on your face right now and want to be a partner but they're looking long term and they're looking like if they can get conditioned to your area, then more people are accepting of their product. And next thing you know, they're doing a hostile takeover of Japan. So you do always have to be mindful of that. I think WWE is very smart for that. They got to think of their shareholders. But if you're new Japan uh, pro wrestling, I would caution them to be very wise and to, you know, just kind of think about this before they jump into and what's going to be best. They do very well on their own. And they do have that market, right? They just don't have the international exposure as much. Um, so they're going to come to a point where they're going to have to pick and choose. Either team up with WWE or team up with AEW. And then with AEW comes all the Impact Wrestling. And I'm sure you could get something going on with Ring of Honor. And, uh, of course, the Lucha down in Mexico. You can get some work there done. So I kind of am favoring New Japan going that route and joining the territories to go against WWE. And uh, maybe we can someday get that forbidden door to open that Tony Khan always talks about, right? So right now, though, um, President Nick Khan is talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling and WWE teaming up. So let's kind of see where this goes. I am excited about it. Either way, we as wrestling fans are going to win because either way, we are now going to get some cross-promotion to some talent that we've heard of, and but we've never really had the opportunity to see because I know this stuff's kind of hard to watch with New Japan. I've been intrigued by it as well. So 
Um, let's kind of, I'll keep my eyes on that. And if we get a little bit closer and this actually does start to happen, I'll of course talk about it on the channel, but for now let's move on. Hawkamania is running wild on Netflix. That's right. So I wanted to report this a while back and it's getting closer to being done. Um, Thor from the Avengers. That's right. The actor Thor, Chris Hemsworth will be playing Hawk Hogan in a Netflix original biopic called Hawkamania. And it details the basically the up and coming of Hawkamania in the pop culture world. So uh, this is interesting. As you guys see here, I mean, this is hard for me because I grew up watching Hawk Hogan. I was really into Hawk Hogan. And so it's different for me to see anybody playing Hawk Hogan other than Hawk Hogan. Um, Chris Hemsworth, nothing taken away from him, but he's not as big as Hawk Hogan. Hawk Hogan's, you know, just got more mass than him, right? But I will be interested to see what Chris Hemsworth can do with the role. I do appreciate his acting. Um, so I look at this and I say, am I going to watch it? Of course I'm in. Yes, I'm always into this stuff. I'm going to watch it. Of course, I'll report it here on the channel. But I look at it and I'm like, ooh, how's this going to be? And usually when I'm a little skeptical of stuff like this, it actually ends up surprising me and I end up doing pretty well with it. So I am going to, of course, keep an eye on it. Um, it's just this stuff is uh, kind of tough because when you watch the original and it's very hard to play a character who is still there and still fresh in people's minds. Um, I cannot think of too many movies that actually did a really good job with that i'm sure there are some out there and if so let me know in the comments but the only one that comes to mind that i really thought just knocked it out of the park was when will smith played muhammad ali in a movie called ali a few years ago and um keep in mind though that ali did happen a lot before my age and era um so i kind of enjoyed a lot of muhammad ali's boxing matches you know after they've happened you know just as i went back and watched them from a historical standpoint so um hawkamania running wild here on netflix and i am going to watch and i'm kind of interested to see what you guys think of it too this will either be really good or it'll bomb really bad so we'll see how it goes let's go to the next story wwe is releasing people again just when i think it's safe to come out and i tell you guys to quit hiding and um keith lee is now gone limitless keith lee is limited in the wwe's eyes and they've actually released keith lee now this one i believe was due to health concerns okay there has not been any reasons given out there are reports coming saying that there were health concerns that just were keeping lee from being in the ring if that's so i do hope um keith lee does have a good healthy recovery um, i do want to say i was liking keith lee and i was liking what they were doing with him you might remember Keith Lee had most of his success in NXT as a huge up-and-comer. Um, he was the NXT champion along with the North American champion at the same time, holding both titles as pictured here. Um, he made his ro main roster debut. He got a really good win over Randy Orton right away. And then from there, they just kind of squashed him and he kind of went downhill a little bit, um, which tends to happen on the main roster. It's a shame. So with Keith Lee, he reminded me a lot, you know, they want to label him as a big man, but I think they kind of wanted to label him as like a Mark Henry, big show, kind of Paul White kind of big man. And I, I don't think he was that kind of big man. I kind of give him a comparison of like a Bam Bam Bigelow, right? So a bigger guy, but he can do those moves off the top rope, those moonsaults and things like that. So it was impressive to, you know, we haven't had anybody like that in the wrestling industry in a while. So um, I hope Keith Lee has a healthy recovery. I hope whatever he's dealing with personally works out well. But And hopefully the uh, limitless one will be limitless and back in a wrestling ring soon enough. So uh, best of luck to Keith Lee, who was just getting his career going. Let's go to the next one. So the next WWE release star is a little bit of a different situation. The Velva Teen Dream. Okay, I did that on purpose is now been released from the WWE. Uh, the Velveteen Dream reportedly, about a year or two ago, actually, it wasn't uh, too long ago, he had some reports of inappropriate text messages with teenagers. And um, those reports got investigated by WWE's corporate office. 
and they, I think, found that he basically, they never reported on it, but they just kind of made it go away. So, and I believe that means that they found nothing to report and it just kind of fizzled out. So, um, but the problem that also fizzled out was his career. Okay, Velveteen Dream was on track to have a very, very good main event run. He is definitely, in the world of sports entertainment, a sports entertainer, okay? Who can also happen to wrestle? He had a great move set, a great character, and he had good mic work. So he had all those three qualifications to be a pro wrestler. Um, the only problem is he did have what some are labeling is the big deal breaker, which is unprofessionalism. Um, so what actually kind of did him in, and according to the backstage, is he was um, very unprofessional majority of the time. And it's like the brighter her, his star burned, the worse it got. So it uh, got to a point where he got into the nerves of the wrong people on the wrong side of the right people in the WWE. And now he is now gone from the company. So I find this kind of interesting because um, ever since the quote unquote scandal, he definitely went very, very underground. They didn't promote him as much. They had him really off TV a lot. And then here, at, once it settled down, they kind of pushed him out the back door without anybody noticing. So I think that was smart. And it was a very corporate move of WWE to just to not get rid of him in the midst of the scandal. So they just kind of squashed all that, made everybody forget about it. And then they pushed him out the back door and said, okay, you can't work here anymore. So I will be interested to kind of see what would happen. Of course, I want to hear his side of this whole story. Um, I did appreciate the talent and him as a worker, but there are some things in the, the wrestling world that just, you know, we might see him on a dark side of the ring episode someday. Um, do I think he'll land on his feet? Yes, I do. Um, for me, TNA impact wrestling always seems to grab these kind of guys. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to knock the promotion for that. I just think when you're a star of talent promotion, you try to grab whatever you can to draw in some ratings and Velveteen dream. The fact that he can do that and he could be a headliner there. Cause he is a good enough wrestler. Um, you know, and you might luck out with a redemption story with him. So I feel like, yes, TNA is going to be all over him and the Velveteen dream will be dreaming of a new job, um, in TNA. So let's, um, go ahead and move on to the next story here. So the revenge of a snake, um, there was an interesting little interview with Jake the Snake Roberts this week that actually revolved around his Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Um, in that same year, the Ultimate Warrior was um, actually being the headline for that Hall of Fame class. And apparently Jake Roberts was feeling some kind of way about the Ultimate Warrior for all these years. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts was actually supposed to be the... WWF champion and the warrior, I guess, apparently, um, kind of thwarted his, uh, title run and wouldn't work and job for him. And Jake Roberts, all these years kind of pent up this aggression. And here's a quote from Jake, the snake Roberts in his interview. He said, quote unquote, um, I had a roll of quarters in my pocket and I was going to beat his ass and I'm waiting on him. Looking for him, of course, warrior being warrior, they had him in a private area and security guards and all that. I had to wait, and I had to wait, and I had to wait. I'm boiling, I'm boiling, I'm boiling. And then all of a sudden, somebody tapped me on the back, Jake said. Turned around, and it was warrior. He put his hands up and said, please, just let me do this. I need to apologize to you and your family. That's who I was then, but that wasn't me. But if it means anything, just know that I'm sorry. End quote. Jake then goes on to say he disarmed me. Um, and it's weird because Jake the Snake Roberts said he had a roll of quarters in his pocket and he was actually going to just knock out the Ultimate Warrior at the Hall of Fame. He was ready to just punch him in the face and, you know, kind of take him out. Um, and Jake then goes on to say, you know, he totally disarmed me with that statement. And he said, another lesson in life, man. That's what I got, a lesson. Um, it just goes to show that, you know, people grow. And sometimes the person you are when you're in your younger years or even your mid years, you know, when you grow out of that and you realize, you know, life's a lot bigger than sometimes the little things that you deal with. And um, that was one of those things. And I think what where you're 
and Jake did learn there in that situation is the power of forgiveness, right? Um, you know, you guys all know the story. Uh, that Hall of Fame ceremony, you know, I was a huge Ultimate Warrior fan, and that one was sad to me. Um, I remember watching that ceremony. I remember him staring at his two daughters, and I remember there was a point in that where he looked right at him and said, I want you two to know being your father is one of the greatest things I've ever done in my life. And it was very heartwarming, very touching. And that whole weekend, everybody said the warrior was just um, walking around and he was trying to make amends with everybody. He was apologizing for the person he was. He was trying to really make things right with everybody from Vince to apparently now Jake Roberts to Hawk Hogan. Um, And it was very, very important for him. And then sad enough, it was, you know, uh, very, very shortly after on Monday Night Raw, he gave uh, that very odd speech um, as he, you know, normally did. And it was talking about, it was almost talking about his dying and um, his death. And then he actually left that arena and fell down and died of a heart attack. Um, and it's just crazy, right? Because, you know, the spirit of the warrior lives on. And, um, but, you know, just another great story of, you know, I think Jake the Snake Roberts looked at this and he held on to all that anger for years. And then he just got disarmed because he realized warrior was also dealing with his own kind of demons. And, um, sometimes, you know, it's very easy to be angry at our situations, but we don't realize the person on the other side of that situation and their perspective as well. And so, you know, that's something I always kind of, you know, I would challenge each of my listeners to just think about. Um, and this is a great example of sometimes how wrestling can mimic real life. So, Um, really great story. It grabbed my attention from Jake Roberts and, um, it was just another, you know, interesting layer to the warrior in, um, his final days. So, um, just wanted to add that in there. And our final story, SummerSlam matches are heating up. We have, uh, SummerSlam right around the corner, about two months away. We still have a road to get there. We have Hell in a Cell coming up here at the end of the month, but, Matches are already heating up, and I wanted to talk about this. So first and foremost, Paul Heyman could potentially have both guys in both championship matches at SummerSlam. Um, One on Raw, one on SmackDown, of course. So the first rumored match is Roman Reigns versus John Cena for the championship. Um, I agree with this match 100%. I think it's the right time to have this match. To me, this is a SummerSlam match main event worthy match. I don't want to really see it at WrestleMania. I think there's a bigger match at Mania for Roman, but I feel that John Cena coming back and I feel like Roman does need to win this match again, just to add another win to the belt. Roman had an amazing dominant win over Edge and Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania with a triple threat match and actually pinning both of them, which I thought was just, you know, stellar. So now the next step is Let's take on the WWE's modern day Hawk Hogan, John Cena. And let's let Roman actually, the Roman Empire stomp over Cena by hook or by crook. You know, it can be a clean win or, you know, a little bit of an interference. That's fine. That's what the heels do. But I think then that leads Roman into being the king of the Roman Empire and the Samoan dynasty and he gives a speech about being the head of the table and how he's beaten every wrestler that has come up to him and how he's beaten even Mr. Hollywood himself, John Cena. And I think this match will set up an era of Roman in the fall, which will then lead to the return of The Rock. And I think his cousin, The Rock, will come back. As I talked about in a previous podcast, I said, you know, when I covered the Roman Empire podcast, And I talked about how this match could build up for WrestleMania next year. And I think this is the first steps of that, of just to light the fire a little bit with uh, John Cena being kind of that Hollywood wrestling star now. But he's not as big as The Rock, is he? And he doesn't have a connection to Roman as The Rock does. So I think it's Rock and Roman next year at WrestleMania. And I think that match has got to happen. And I think that's going to be an epic WrestleMania moment. But for now, yeah, I'll settle for SummerSlam Cena. And we'll get Cena Slam versus the Roman Empire. And I think this would have the potential to be a really good match. Both of these guys wrestle a similar type WWE entertaining style. So this is going to be a good style matchup as well. On the flip side of the coin, talking about style matchups, the other rumored match for SummerSlam right now is the return of the 
reigning, defending, undisputed. Well, he doesn't have a title right now, but Brock Lesnar. Okay, Paul Heyman represented Brock Lesnar for many years, and I think he'll continue to represent him on the return. But he will be taking on Bobby Lashley, the road back to dominant Bobby Lashley. You guys know when I covered that road to dominant piece in my first episode, I talked about the road back to dominant and how Bobby Lashley you know, was favored by the WWE. He left. He went and fought in MMA, came back to the WWE. He went out and wrestled on the side too, and he actually made himself a main eventer. Now he's in the top. Um, I feel like this has the MMA type background feel. So the wrestlers who can also legitimately fight in MMA. So I think Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, you know, Lesnar, of course, having the UFC uh, with ultimate fighting championship, heavyweight champion, um, and, and did very well there. So, and, and with Bobby Lashley, I uh, believe it'd be an over in Bell, uh, Bellator MMA. So these guys are going to have a great dream match. They have similar styles and um, both dominant big man styles. And if you don't watch it for the match, you know, watch it for the commentary because you're going to have MVP versus Paul Heyman. These two going back and forth representing their big men is going to be just epic in its own self. So there's an entertainment value, and then you have a big fight feel between these two matches in the MMA world. So I um, this is going to be a tough one. So, you know, do you give Brock the win, or do you maybe give Bobby Lashley the win? I'm always going to say I think you go with Bobby Lashley just to help build him up because the WWE needs to build up their stars right now. And Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns got to be the next generation, right? So I really feel that this could be a future media match between those two. But for now, I do think Bobby Lashley needs to get the win um, over Brock. I think that would be a big, big, huge taking for him and um, being dominant and continuing his push. So... I am looking forward to this matchup. And uh, fun fact, Bobby Lashley actually had it in his WWE contract that he would be uh, getting a match against Brock Lesnar during his WWE contract tenure. So this could be the contract fulfilled. Um, That was a big enticer to get Bobby Lashley to come back to the WWE because he wanted that big money match. So SummerSlam's heating up. And I'll tell you what, with this being the second biggest event of the year. It's now starting to feel like that with these two matches. Let me know what you guys think of this, but I'm definitely ready for that. Well, there has been a lot of news this week, and I just want to say thank you guys. I reported on what I felt was the main stories here on Tap Out Talk, and um, there is a lot more stuff, and of course, you guys, I'll be talking about those things in the future, but for now, I just want to say, as always, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. It costs nothing. You can always, you know, change your decision. But for now, it's not goodbye. Like we always say, it's game over. But you can't stay.